Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Friday Night Fights. On tonight's card, a USMF prestige bout between Robert Renier and Remy Singh. A feature bout between Puerto Rico's Noberto Seguino versus former UFC veteran Mike the Lion King. King Brian Mises Kamara versus Sean Machete Ellis in a welterweight co-main event that is sure to excite. And in our main event, New York's own Omar Punches Ahmed is stepping in against Houston's Sammy the Bull Mongonia. Tonight's event is brought to you by the Tourism Authority of Thailand, Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino, CW Distributing, Bear Burger, and Recover NYC. All of this evening's bouts will be sanctioned by the ISKA. Re Representative Tom Sconzo is in attendance. Refereeing tonight's fight will be Joel Becker and Kevin Bohol. Judging tonight's fight, Mohamed Ahmed, Marcel Varela, and Alexius Phoenix. Officiating will be Abilie Lopez, Johnny Isaac, and Russell Garcia. Keeping time, Leo Rodriguez. Keeping score, Casey Dong. And doctors at ringside, Dr. Rufus Sadler and Dr. Robert Polofsky. And now, without any further ado, let's get it on. Get ready for five rounds of action to design the ISKA full rules title in the 170 pound weight class. It's a defense. Fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks with the gold trim and weighing in at 170 pounds. He represents Rajasi Muay Thai with a record of 11, five and one. One of those wins by way of knockout from Boston, Massachusetts, Elvin Singdam Johnson. And fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the red trunks and also weighing in at 170 pounds. He represents King's Thai Boxing with a record of eight and four. Three by way of knockout from Bronx, New York, Jay Cuco Rodriguez. We are underway in our first fight of the night here from the Broad Street Ballroom in New York City, coming to you live. Ariel Agami with Primo Bellarosa ringside, taking in Jay Cuco Rodriguez in the red trunks against Elvin Singdam Johnson in the black with gold stars. Cuco Rodriguez absolutely brought hell with him in his last fight here on Friday Night Fights, Ariel. We're gonna see, I'm, I, I don't think he's capable of not bringing it in a fight, so He's gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna come hard tonight. We'll see if Elvin Johnson can put up with it. And it looks like he's willing to oblige him. Rodriguez, the smaller man in this fight, one in which he's defending his 170 pound ISKA title. But Rodriguez chopping down with that right elbow. Singdam, known as the Black Lion in Thai, that's Elvin Johnson's nickname. Looking to steal the belt away and take it back to Rajasi Muay Thai in Boston, Mass. And Kuko Rodriguez just charging forward. A lot of the fight in the clinch so far, Ariel. We'll see if the, if the height advantage of Johnson actually pays off for him in there. Rodriguez known for his aggressive style. His nickname Kuko, Spanish for the boogeyman. And his fighting style can be the stuff of nightmares, but the bigger man, Elvin Johnson, looks up to the task tonight. He's six foot two. Rodriguez is 5'11". Rodriguez has gone to the body twice in the last 30 seconds with punches. I think that his, his plan is bring the big man down with body shots. As Teddy Atlas, the famed boxing trainer and announcer, likes to say, put water in the basement. Keep putting water in the basement. That's it. Eventually, Commit to the body work. Floods, right? Commit to the body work. Nice right hand from Rodriguez. Rodriguez starting to open up here towards the end of round one on Elvin Johnson. Nice double body hooks. Nice finish to the first round by the defending champion. Out of Kings Tie Boxing in New York City. His trainer, the great Aaron the Ghost Fisher.
Another look at some of the action here from that first round. Jay Rodriguez putting in some good work there, especially the final minute. Looked like early Elvin Johnson was going to try to impose his size advantage on Rodriguez, but even as the two separated, Rodriguez was the one able to get extension, not so much Singdom. Yeah, that's the thing. I think I think Johnson tried to impose his, his height advantage a little bit in the beginning there, get the clinch right away and, and kind of man up on Rodriguez, and Rodriguez just wasn't having it. Francisco Ramos, the head coach at Rajasi Muay Thai in Boston, coaching on that man, Elvin Singdom Johnson. Johnson enters action tonight with an 11-5 mark. To his credit, one knockout, 26 years of age. Jay Rodriguez on the other side is 23 years old. That head kick from, John, from Johnson was almost on the chin of Rodriguez. Nice elbow from Johnson. Rodriguez eight and four with three KOs, including a TKO win, TKO win last March, just this past March the 1st to capture this 170 pound belt that he currently holds. Now it's Elvin Johnson playing the big man in the red corner. It's Johnson's first appearance on Friday Night Fights, but he says it will not be his last. Nice elbow from Kuko. Again, Rodriguez in the red, Johnson in the black. Johnson's really starting to push forward in this round. Trying to reestablish himself after getting pushed a little bit in the first round. Remember, we're scheduled for five here at 170 pounds. Jay Rodriguez looking for the dump there. Rodriguez has caught that kick on, on his right side. Johnson's thrown that switch kick two, three times now, and Rodriguez has caught it, and he's not able to get the switch. It's a, it's a testament to the balance of Johnson. Back elbow kind of muffled a little bit, but Rodriguez and again able to trip. Finally. Rodriguez has done a good job. He's, he's thrown that spinning elbow. It's been blocked by Johnson, but he follows it right up with a couple of punches and kicks that land. Then he was able to finish off with finally getting that sweep that he's tried for. Johnson tries there to go up he high. Goes. And again, it's Rodriguez able yeah. to dump him down to the canvas. Rodriguez has adjusted. Early when he tried those sweeps, he was just trying to kick the leg out. That wasn't working. Now if you watch Rodriguez when he gets that sweep, he'll catch the leg. And just at the last minute when he tries that sweep kick, he'll turn his foot to pull that to pull Johnson's supporting leg in. It was a really small but really nice adjustment that he made. Some of the action here from that second round. It was Rodriguez. There it is. Now watch here. He'll kick under. And you see how he turned his foot a little bit to get that extra little bit of sweep out of instead of just trying to kick the leg out completely. So often we see on Friday Night Fights, the bigger body doesn't always translate into the more successful fighter. It doesn't. And that, that, that's a fact, Ariel. So interesting. Especially with more of a stand-up sport yeah, like Muay Thai, I mean, you expect the longer man to kind of dominate at times, but we we have some aggressive, shorter fighters on this card. Absolutely, and and really, that's the way that you negate the height advantage and the length advantage of fighters is you you just have to be aggressive. Now, with a guy like Rodriguez, he's going to be aggressive whether he's shorter or taller than than his opponent. So, you know, that's just the way he fights. But it seems to be working so far against Johnson. And Jay Rodriguez, the defending champion at 170 pounds, the ISKA title, title holder, wearing the red trunks with the white stripe, representing King's Thai Boxing in New York. Elvin Singdom Johnson in the black trunks with gold star and lettering. He's out of Rajasi Muay Thai in Boston as he puts every pound of his weight on top of Jay Rodriguez in the ring there. It's called the slip, but having a big man like that fall on top, he doesn't. Yeah. Do you any favors? Yeah, that's hard. Uh, you know, here's the thing. You know, if you if you hit a dump or a sweep and you stay standing, that that scores big with the judges. Uh, when you try to hit that sweep or that dump and you get pulled down, it doesn't score nearly as high because you weren't in complete control of that. But uh, you know, so a lot of fighters will actually try to pull the guy down with them in order for uh, the guy who's pulling the sweep not to get as as, as much uh, points for it. Rodriguez opening up a little bit here. 
Final minute of round three. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds at 170. Both men came in exactly on weight. It's been a very close round so far. I'd, I'd give Johnson the edge in the clinch for sure. That might be the, the factor to give him the, this round. Joe Becker, our third man in the ring, will break up the two fighters as we hit the closing moments of round three. Rodriguez doubles up on the outside leg kick. Tries to load up with the right hand. A little bit of a half-hearted leg kick try from Rodriguez at the end of round three, maybe just kind of coasting through the final moments. Yeah, uh, Johnson did really well that round in the clinch. He definitely had the advantage. I'd like to see him use his length on the outside as well. You know, hit that long jab just to keep distance. Hit that, hit that straight kick, hit that teep or push, and just keep distance with it, you know? And then once Rodriguez forces his way in with punches, then take the clinch. And we've seen Johnson kind of go for those looping shots, and that always kind of negates that reach advantage of the big guys. That's exactly it, Ariel. You know, the, where, where the longer guy, the taller guy has the advantage is in his straight shots. Once he starts throwing overhands or hooks, that, that shortens up those punches, and he, and he loses that advantage that he has. And Rodriguez has displayed pretty good footwork throughout his career, so he's not going to stand in the pocket and wait for those big shots to land. Yeah. If he can avoid it, certainly. Ready for round four here. Don't forget the mouthpiece, Sing Dom. Going to need that. And Sing Dom is tied for Black Lion. That is the nickname of Elvin Johnson, a first-timer here on Friday Night Fights, but not a first time in the ring. 11-5 with a knockout to his credit. Jay Rodriguez on the other side, the defending champ, 8-4 with three knockouts. Nice body kick from Johnson right there. Being a southpaw, his strong leg, strong knee is right, is right to the liver of Rodriguez. We haven't seen him use that weapon yet. Oh, right there. Oh, Primo calls for it. It happens. Tried to go for that shot. This time, Rodriguez ready for it. And he takes the leg out from under Elvin Johnson again. It's a little bit more paced round to start out here in the third. Rodriguez. There, see how Johnson spun out of that corner? It's a really nice move, very subtle. Nice low kick from Rodriguez right there. He's been the aggressor. He's been the one coming forward for a lot of this fight. We're in our fourth of a scheduled five rounds here. Jay Rodriguez trying to keep a stranglehold on the 170 pound championship of the ISKA. Full rules Muay Thai in effect here. Still five more big fights coming your way. Including a championship matchup next up involving Juan Mucho Macho Cortez, a 120 pounder you just have to see to believe. And our main event, of course, Sammy the Bull Mongonia back in action just a month after his last win, a knockout victory. Over to Ron, the Tornado Hassanov. Back on March the 1st, he meets the Queens native Omar Punches Ahmed in our main event, a kickboxing matchup at the professional level. But right now, still more business to tend to between Elvin Singh Dom Johnson and Jay Cuco Rodriguez with a championship belt hanging in the balance. And again, it was, the good- It was that sweep that Rodriguez got, but he had, he had been kicked in the liver in that, on his right side at least three or four times before he got that sweep. Now, if you watch, watch where they're standing by the ring. Rod, uh, Johnson is, is fighting on the back foot. He's backing up. He's doing a really good job, but he's backing up as he does it. Rodriguez is the one moving forward, but if you watch, he's following Johnson on the outside of the ring rather than cutting off Johnson and putting him against the ropes. If he could do that, he can force the fight a little bit more. Round five. Set to begin, 
live from New York City's Broad Street Ballroom. Jay Rodriguez and Elvin Johnson vying for a 170 pound belt. Rodriguez, your current title holder, wearing the red trunks. Johnson in the black trying to take it back to Boston. That was a nice, he, he checked Rodriguez's kick and then came in with a low kick of his own. Really nice move from Johnson right there. Nice check, nice low kick afterwards again from Johnson. Elvin opening up here. There, yeah. see now he's starting to use the, his link. Firefight breaking out in round five. Elbow try from Johnson, and another one chops down on Kuko. Good couple of elbows from Johnson. Nice lean back right there against the ropes. Nice sweep from Rodriguez to pull that out. Go back up a little bit. Yeah, Johnson's really getting on that, on that leg of Rodriguez in this round. I'd like to have seen him do it early. Oh, that was a nice kick. Johnson looking for the combination. Oh, Johnson's hurt right now. One of those Rodriguez. punches, or Rodriguez is hurt. One of those punches that Johnson hit and it stunned Rodriguez. And a standing eight count issued by Joel Becker. Now Rodriguez has to fight through this fifth round to get to the cards as he fires a vicious left-legged body kick into Johnson, but Elvin keeps on coming. Sing Dom taking charge here down the stretch. 20 seconds to go. That straight left of Johnson is hitting hard. Jay Rodriguez in major trouble here. You know, here's the thing. Rodriguez doesn't know how to do anything but fight. He won't quit, so if he gets hit, his instinct is to tuck his chin and fire back. Elvin Johnson trying to knock out Kuko Rodriguez with just seconds remaining. A knee and an elbow, another knee. Can Kuko survive? He turns away from the action as the bell sounds in round number five, a dominant fifth round. What a finish for Johnson. What toughness from Rodriguez. Elvin Singh Dom Johnson in his Friday Night Fights debut closes the show in style in a big way against the defending champion. Let's take a look at the shot that really rung Rodriguez's bell. It was a right to the ear and then another short left it looked like. And I don't think Rodriguez ever recovered, Primo. Yeah, no, he, re he really didn't. He's, he's tough and he stayed in there, but he didn't really recover from that, from that first standing eight count. So I think fair to say a clear 10-8 round there for Elvin Johnson. The question is now, Primo, was it enough to get him a championship belt? Yeah. Yeah, that, that is the question. Definitely boy. a 10-8 round right there, but boy, Johnson turned it on. And Once he started being long with his left hand, that's what started hurting Rodriguez. And you could see Joel Becker, he's conscious of the time left in the round. Yeah. He didn't want to stop the fight or call a standing eight with one or two seconds left in the fifth round. That's a sign of an excellent referee. You could see that he was he was watching Rodriguez. He didn't want him to get hurt, but he also wanted to give a chance for the fighters to fight. So we'll see if the strong finish from the Boston native Elvin Johnson is enough to bring, help him bring some hardware home to Rajasi Muay Thai. And I'll tell you what, Primo, one more round. Jay Rodriguez could have had some hard time getting through this trouble. one. I mean, another 30 seconds in that round. Yes. And Rodriguez yes. might have been yes. done. Yes. But you see what I was talking about with Rodriguez. He's such a he's such a tough fighter that even when he got hurt, instead of his instinct being to run and recoup, or his instinct to be to you know grab Johnson Clinch and up. stall, his instinct was tuck his chin and start firing back. I mean, you gotta love that. You have to respect that out of a fighter. Rodriguez back on his feet, out of the corner, and now it's up to the judges. Great sportsmanship between these two. The age-old sports rivalry continues tonight on Friday Night Fights, Boston against New York. Ariel Agami ringside at the Broad Street Ballroom with Primo Bellarosa awaiting the official decision in this 170-pound title matchup. Rodriguez on the right side of your screen in the red trunks trying to keep his hardware. Connor Hall, our ring announcer, has the scorecards in hand. We send it up to him for the official particulars. All right, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen. After five rounds of action, we do have decision. We go to the judge's scorecard. Judges see this, Judge B, 48-46 for the red corner. Judge C, 46-48 for the blue corner. Judge A saw this, 47-47. We have a draw. Again, it was a great fight anyways. Well, now, folks, we are about to see another fan favorite here on Friday Night Fights take to the squared circle, and you hear the applause. That's Jeremiah Vega in the ring, sealing the ring right now, but the applause from the crowd is for Juan Mucho Macho Cortez, the little big man here, a dominant force on Friday Night Fights, Primo Bellarosa, and every time we see him matched up with a tough opponent, he ends up being the bully. Yeah, the kid, is a t he's the tiny tornado. You know, he's, uh, he's fought a lot at 125. He's won titles at 125. And uh, his coach, uh, Joe Sempieri, has actually told me he'd rather have him fighting at 120. You know, that, that's actually, he actually weighed in yesterday at under, he was underweight at, uh, at 119. So, uh, you know, 120, 119 is not a hard weight for Macho to make. And tonight he goes for yet another belt, the 120-pound ISKA East Coast Championship for the introductions to our next title bout. Here's Connor Hall. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for five rounds of action to decide the ISKA full rules title in the 120-pound weight division. Fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the floral trunks and weighing in at 119 pounds. He represents Ascension Athletics with a record of six and two, one by way of knockout. From Connecticut, Jeremiah Kid Flash Vega. And fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the purple trunks with the black trim. He's weighing in at 119 pounds. He represents Hanzo Gracie with a record of 12 and 2. The man from Sexico, Juan Mucho Macho Cortez. So here we go, another championship fight live from New York City's Broad Street Ballroom. We're underway. Jeremiah Kid Flash Vega against Juan Mucho Macho Cortez. And right away, Cortez shows the power and aggression in that small frame of his immediate 
monster teep and a dump of Jeremiah Vega onto the canvas. Yeah, Macho comes out hard at the beginning of every fight. He's 12 and two entering action tonight, representing the Henzo Gracie Academy in New York City. Cortez in the purple trunks. Kid Flash, Jeremiah Vega in the sky blue and flower ensemble, representing Ascension Athletics in Bristol, Connecticut. Nice sidekick by Vega to keep Cortez off for just a moment. Yeah, this is, a, the story of this fight is the story of every fight with uh, Macho. Can, can the guy he's fighting be long? Macho is, is almost always the shorter fighter, and it's the job of, the, of his opponent to stay long. He's five foot four, Vega's five foot eight. But again, Cortez, he puts his head down and charges forward. Still to come later on, folks, our main event of the evening, Sammy the Bull Mongonia takes on Omar punches Ahmed. We'll look to defend his home turf here in New York as Cortez takes a spill going for a head kick. Cortez on the come once again with Vega up against the ropes. Juan actually gives him a bit of breathing room, surprisingly. Yeah, he's a very in and out fighter. He'll dance on the outside, he'll charge in, he'll dance back out. It's a five round, full rules Muay Thai battle for the 120 pound ISKA East Coast Championship. And again, it's Cortez. As the bell sounds, dumping Vega onto the canvas, he's got to have a 300-pound monster in, the, in that little body of his. I don't he know. really does. He's it's like, unbelievable. Yeah, it's like a fat kid inside there somewhere, right? He just he just hulks everybody yeah, every he really time. Does. It's unbelievable. Look yeah, at some of the his, work from his Cortez. His pace is just too much for Vega right now. You can see Vega wants to have a, you know, a, a very paced fight. Throw a kick, do some defense, throw hard again. And uh, Macho's just not giving him that opportunity. And look at that. Lower part of the leg and then the upper thigh doubling up with the, with the low kicks for Cortez. Then went for the body. Vega able to stem the tide on the assault for a moment. But the pro and normally in a five round fight, Primo, you would say good idea for Vega to pace himself. He's against the hostile crowd, doesn't sure. want to go too nuts early. The problem is Cortez will fight like this for five rounds. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Cortez, does, he doesn't slow down. He's not, he's not going to gas going into the fourth and fifth. And look at that. Cortez foaming at the mouth to get out of the corner and start round two here. It's a nice straight left from Vega. That hit, he seems to be turning it up a little bit right now off the start. We'll see if it still happens once Cortez starts hitting him. As my broadcast partner, Primo Bellarosa, mentioned earlier, we've seen Juan Cortez win belts at 118 pounds and 125 pounds on this promotion, Friday Night Fights. He now looks to capture a belt at 120, which terrifyingly, Joe Sampieri, his trainer says, is his best weight. Yeah, and again, that was down, that was low blow right there. He threw a knee, Cortez threw a knee, it missed in the shin or foot actually hit Vega low. And some blood trickling from the nose of Vega as well now. Cortez unloading everything right now. Oh, push kick to the face, lands for Cortez, and a body kick, and then an unstoppable combination. Yeah, see, Vega just can't get started. That push kick that Cortez just landed to the face, he threw it from halfway across the ring, and Vega still didn't have a chance to stop it. Chance of Juanito rained down at the Broad Street Ballroom. And you can see why he's one of the favorites. Not just in this city, but all over North America. North America's Muay Thai scene. The kid is just unflappable, does not tire at all. Cortez tries to stick an elbow in after a kick combination. Blood now becoming a little more regular out of the nose of Vega. This is only round two. We're scheduled for five. Cortez has designs on making it a short night. Although he ran into a shot from Vega there. Nice turn from Cortez. <laughs> Shakes it right off. 
Oh, a tremendous round for Juan Cortez. Yeah, he hasn't slowed down yet, and Ve Vega actually seems to be slowing down. It's really incredible, Primo. It, it, it really makes you wonder if and when Juan Cortez might take it to the next level because he, he he's he's a dominant force at the Class B level right now. Yeah, right right now at 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 the, at the B level of, of of Muay Thai, he's beaten up a lot of guys. You know, it it, it might be time for uh, him and his coaches to start thinking about going pro, just just to find competition. He's just an absolute beast in the five foot four body. He's 31 years of age. Jeremiah Vega is 24. But Cortez fights like the younger guy, the younger sprier athlete. Yeah, he just he doesn't stop. If you watch him, he throws everything in combination. But he's not choosing the combination before he throws it. You know, he throws a cross, he sees an opening, he throws a left hook to the body. He sees an opening, he throws a low kick, you know? But his his eyesight is so fast and his reflexes are so fast that it can follow everything up. Nice job by Vega to avoid getting swept, but still it's Cortez coming forward with fire. So Vega just did a really good job with his jab. Nice sweep as well. You know, he hit, he hit two long jabs. He's got to stay behind that long jab and work from there. It's as if every time an opponent tries to keep off Cortez with a jab, a series of jabs, the first jab might land, but by the time the second one's being delivered, Cortez is already inside the guard and pressed up against you, inflicting pain. Yeah, Cor Cortez fights like he doesn't really care what you throw at him. Oh boy, Cortez. Muscles Vega down to the canvas, almost kicked him in the face as he was falling down. Cortez unloading He's gonna again. get a standing eight count here. Crowd's going nuts here at the Broad Street Ballroom. Joel Becker taking Joel's a close look. Joel's gonna stop this fight, I think. Here we go. 30 seconds left, if, or if Ortiz turns it up, he can end this fight. Juan Cortez in the purple trunks putting on another show for the New York crowd. Give Jeremiah Vega a lot of credit, tasting his own blood in this fight. He's been under fire from the very beginning, but he's still in there, hanging tough. Yeah, a lot, a lot of guys would have quit after that standing eight count that just happened. Vegas stayed in there and stayed tough. End of round three. And Vega, a little bit dejected, heading back to his corner on the left side of your screen. Known as Kid Flash, out of Ascension Athletics in Bristol, Connecticut, trains under Matt Bissett and Jeff Haddad. But it's been Juan Mucho Macho Cortez who has been the flash in this fight, the faster fighter, the stronger fighter. Yeah, there was that dump followed by a kick right away. Watch, he hits this leg behind there, and then he throws that kick. Super close to landing. That most likely would have ended the night Absolutely. for Jeremiah Vega. Yeah, without a doubt. There's that left hook. That stunned Vega right there. It was the left hook that started that series in order to get the standing eight. Well, let's see. How much longer this might go? Can Jeremiah Vega turn the tables or will Juan Cortez continue the assault as he chases another championship on Friday Night Fights? It's like Cortez runs on batteries. The guy is just, he just doesn't stop. Yeah, he's, he's an energizer bunny. Sticks the left hook in, moves away. Catches the tee from Vega, fires an outside leg kick. Everything working for Cortez tonight. You know, the thing about Cortez's offense right now is throughout the whole fight, it hasn't been predictable. You know, you don't know where he's going to hit or what he's going to throw. Right there, a little faint with the back fist or back elbow. Moves away, circles back, throws a tee. 
We're live from New York City's Broad Street Ballroom, checking out at a tremendous performance by Juan Mucho Macho Cortez in the purple trunks, taking on Jeremiah Kit Flash Vega in the sky blue and flowered ensemble. We're in round four of a scheduled five. Cortez has been on the attack throughout. And it looked like he stuck an elbow in on the break on Vega there too. Yeah, it was close. With Vega, a lot of credit here. Continues to forge ahead despite taking a lot of punishment from Mucho Macho. Yeah, Vega, Vega's recovered quite a bit from that from that knockdown so far in this round. He's, he's done a good job right from the beginning after that break, coming back in, fighting like normal. Blood and sweat flying here at ringside as Juan Cortez loads up on Jeremiah Vega. Now Juan being a little bit more selective for just a moment. Picking his spots. And a straight left Superman punch begins a combination to end round four. That was a really nice combination to end that round from Cortez. You just see the points keep piling up, piling up, Primo. Every time Juan Cortez fights, he just does something spectacular. Well, that's just it. Here's this jump punch, ducks under, and then he lands the body kick afterwards. He does a really good job of staying active but taking what's offered in front of him. No singles, no yeah. single blows from him. Yep. Again, Juan Cortez looking to become a three-weight champion here on Friday Night Fights. This perhaps will be the crowning achievement of his career so far with the ISKA 120-pound East Coast Championship up for grabs tonight. Ari Lagami ringside at the Broad Street Ballroom with Primo Bellarosa, the head coach at Vision Quest Muay Thai. Saw one of his prized pupils, Kenny Galenti, capture a 125 pound Friday night fight spelt earlier this evening. Congratulations to Primo and Kenny. Thank you, sir. What a from fight Vision. from that kid, huh? Oh, tremendous composure. What's interesting about Kenny, so humble and nice when you talk to him, but once he gets in the ring. He's a devil. He's a very mean guy. Yeah, super fun kid, super respectful right from the beginning. I've trained him since he was 14 years old. He's 20 years old now. And uh, he has always been the most respectful, hardest working kid in the gym. You put him in the ring and he doesn't care who's on the other side. He wants to kill him. Same could be said about- That right hand hurt Vega right there. You could say the same about the man on the attack right now, Juan Cortez, once again, all over Jeremiah Vega. Elbows, nonstop elbows. A standing eight count, Cortez thinks it's over. He's too excited. He's hurting himself on He's this. He's doing wind sprints to cool off yeah. as Joel Becker administers the count. Cortez thought he closed the show. Can he actually complete the knockout? One minute left. With yet another title belt seemingly coming his way. That being Cortez in the purple. Vega able to avoid the punishment this time. Yeah, Vega's still got decent head movement on his defense, you know? Cortez just throws in bunches and manages to land. So much heart on display for Kid Flash here. Still coming forward, give him a lot of credit. But Cortez has an answer seemingly every time. Back elbow. Vega in some trouble. And one more standing eight count for good measure as Juan Mucho Macho Cortez appears to have done it once again with a dominant 10 minutes of action against Jeremiah Vega. Excellent, excellent fight. Like I said, Cortez is a demon in the ring, but the toughness of Vega made that fight go five rounds. And you can just see the frustration on Vega's face because this is a skilled fighter here. 
a guy who was really talented and very athletic. Absolutely. But he just couldn't breathe in there. And we see that with every one of Cortez's opponents, Primo. Yeah. You give Juan Cortez just a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of air, and he sucks it all up. Yeah, Cortez is such a whirlwind in there. Like you said, he just sucks up all the oxygen on you. Just a bruising five rounds administered by Mucho Macho. A native of Puebla, Mexico, now actually spends a lot of time in Philadelphia. His gym, though, right here in New York City, the Henzo Gracie Academy, as Juan flexes for the crowd here at center ring. The final flurry of his performance just a few moments ago. And you can see why the crowd loves him so much. Action is assured when Mucho Macho steps inside the ropes. All but a formality now. We send it up to Connor Hall for the official particulars. After five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges see this 42-50. In favor of Juan Mucho Macho Cortez. Well, a clean sweep in absolutely outstanding and dominant fashion. Primo Bellarosa, Juan Cortez, a champion once again on Friday Night Fights. Oh, yeah, like we said, I mean, you know, it was the same pace from beginning to end. He might have actually gone faster in the end. So we now see Juan Cortez win a championship belt at a third different weight level on this promotion. He's won at 125. He's won at 118. And as his teammates, Aaron Lieberman and Mark Morero and Elijah Clark join him in the, in the ring tonight for his celebratory picture session, Juan Cortez now at 120, the ISKA East Coast champion. And again, his trainer, Joe Sampieri, said that this might be his best weight. And that is a scary thought. If we haven't seen the best of Juan Cortez yet, I don't know what's left that he can offer us. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, you know, like you had said, I, I mean, all the way up to 25, he's kind of he's kind of cleared the division out at this point. But at 118, where is he finding fights? Just a monster performance from Juan Cortez here on Friday Night Fights as we come to you live from New York City's Broad Street Ballroom. Ari Lagami alongside Primo Bellarosa, the legendary coach from Vision Quest Muay Thai in Westchester, New York. Pulling double duty this evening, coached his outstanding student, Kenny Galenti, to a 125 pound championship earlier tonight. And now he's my broadcast partner on our tremendous main card from New York City. Also big thanks to James Guccione, who filled in on the undercard for Primo. Did a phenomenal job, so we're happy to have James along on the broadcast team as well. James and is a consummate professional. Outstanding. Fighter, Gooch. cut man, now commentator. Does it all. Yeah, fantastic mustache on that guy as well. Competing with Sammy Mongonia for he the just, Handlebar Championships. I feel like Sam, Sam Mongonia ha, has, uh, has the title for mustache, and uh, James Guccione is giving him a run right now. So up next, Primo, a very interesting situation and first time scenario on Friday Night Fights. We're gonna see a USMF prestige bout between Remy Singh on the left side of your screen and Robert Rainier on the right side of your screen. This fight putting up for grabs a top ranking position in the Muay Thai rankings in North America. So the higher rankings in the higher ranked fighter has a better chance at gaining selection to a U.S. national team for future tournaments. So a lot on the line for these two seasoned fighters as we get set for another five round battle. Yeah, th th this fight holds a, a lot in the balance. The winner of this fight potentially has a spot on the IFMA team to fight in the world championships this year. I was on the IFMA team at, in 2004 and uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big honor to, to represent your country, to hear your your national anthem played, to wear, to wear the USA colors as you go out there. You know, it's a pretty amazing thing. Both these guys are, are gonna fight hard tonight for that spot. For the official introductions between Singh and Rainier, we go to our ring announcer, Connor Hall. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for a United States Muay Thai Federation prestige bout. Full rules Muay Thai in the 160 pound weight division. Five rounds. Fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the sequin blue trunks and weighing in at 157 pounds. He represents Sikhtan Muay Thai with a record of 22 and seven. From right here in New York, Remy Singh. And fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the white and red trunks and weighing in at 158 pounds. He represents double dose Muay Thai with a record of 11 and two, four by way of knockout from California, Robert Renier. Five rounds of full rules Muay Thai scheduled at 160 pounds. Remy Singh out of Seton Gym in Astoria, Queens, New York. On the left side of your screen, wearing the blue trunks, taking on Robert Rainier, the California kid. Fights out of double dose Muay Thai in Fontana. Originally from Diamond Bar, California. It's his first appearance on Friday Night Fights. His first fight in New York City. And he's in tough against Remy Singh, who makes his return to this promotion after a more than three-year absence. Remy Singh, an impressive mark at 28 and 9, while Rainier comes in at 11 and 2 with four KOs. Yeah, Re Rainier, you know, no small uh, record at 11 and 2, but 28 and 9 for Remy Singh. That's a lot of experience, especially especially as a as an amateur in North America. That that's a lot of experience. The two fighters touch gloves as Kevin Mulhall, our official, provides the final instructions, and this should be another outstanding bout on Friday Night Fights. Here we go. We're underway in round one. A top ranking position with the U.S. Muay Thai Federation up for grabs here tonight between Rainier in the white trunks and Remy Singh in the blue. Aria Lagami with Primo Bellarosa live from New York's Broad Street Ballroom, the latest chapter of Friday Night Fights, the longest running Muay Thai series in North America. Nice overhand right there from Rainier. Singh uh, likes a long guard. When you start to come in, he'll put out his left arm to keep distance and then bring his right hand up. But there's a little gap there that happens that somebody can hit an overhand right. Rainier has already tried to land that. Rainier trying to get inside on Singh. Who was the taller man? Singh is six foot one. Rainier about 5'11. Nice down elbow try. Singh, Singh is a big 158 pounds. That was the official weight yesterday. At Thursday's weigh in, Singh probably rehydrated a bit. The official weight for this fight was 160. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it if, if Singh is, is, is up right around 175 right now. Cup's a little loose. Should be good to go. Nice little switch knee from Remy Singh as Rainier came in. Knee to the midsection lands for Singh. Remy doing work backed up against the ropes. Rainier trying to close ground. Bit of a takeover there by Robert Rainier. Yeah, Rainier got him off balance and just kind of rode him to the ground. Nice switch kick to the liver from Singh. It's a very well paced fight so far. First round, they're going to go a little easier and they'll start turning it up as the rounds go on. So back and forth we go in round one between Remy Singh and that man, Robert Rainier, out of double dose Muay Thai in Fontana, CA. He trains under Brian Dobler and Chris Aboy. First time we've gotten a look at Rainier here on Friday Night Fights. And a look at some of the good work he did in round one with the push kick to the midsection of Remy Singh. Rainier looking for what would be his 12th victory and a top ranking position 
with the U.S. Muay Thai Federation. Creates better eligibility chances, better selection chances to U.S. national competitions and world level competitions as well, representing the United States. This being billed as a U.S. MF prestige bout at 160 pounds. Still to come, a professional triple header, folks. Do not go away. Still three more big fights coming up. Up next, Mike the Lion King and Norberto Seguinote lock up at 185 pounds in full rules Muay Thai as Remy Singh drags Robert Rainier to the canvas. Excellent sweep there. He used that bounce off the ropes in order to get that low sweep. After that, Brian McCamara and Sean Ellis lock up in a kickboxing match. And our main event, Sammy the Bull Mongonia puts the elbows in the cupboard tonight for a kickboxing match of his own against Omar Punches Ahmed. You can see Remy Singh. He's got so much experience. They were on the ground, and before he got up, he looked over at his corner in Aziz Nabi and was getting instructions as he got up. Oh, beautiful counter there by Remy Singh. And again, peeking over towards Aziz Nabi and Omar Estevez in his corner. What nice a turn. nice sweep. Yeah, wow. Very sharp. Singh starting to flex the muscle here in the second yeah, round. Yeah, and you can see that he's not working hard to do it. He's just turning it up a little bit. Singh trying to get extended now and step in with the elbow. Going for the body lock on Rainier. Knee to the midsection. See if he pulls that off the ropes again and looks for that sweep. He's really pushing in with his head hard on Rainier. Aziz Nabi clapping. Likes what he sees out of Remy Singh. Exerting his will in the second round against Robert Ray Rainier. Stuck a leg kick in after the bell there. Kevin Mohal lets it slide through two of a scheduled five rounds here at 160. Yeah, Remy Singh really turned it up quite a bit in that round. Now it's Rainier's turn to see if he can turn it up going, going into the third. We saw Rainier come out very aggressively and look like he was going to match Singh tit for tat here. Then he seemed to taper off there in that second round as Singh started to impose his will. We'll see if Rainier can rebound. Yeah, Singh got a couple of nice sweeps in that round, and he made it look easy. You know, it, Rainier looked a little dejected as he walked back to his corner. He's going to have to make some adjustments. Brian Dobler's a fantastic coach. I'm sure he's telling him the right things. We'll, we'll see if Rainier can actually do the right things. Heading into round three of a scheduled five. A U.S. Muay Thai Federation prestige bout. The winner receives a top ranking position and a chance for selection to a U.S. national team. Nice combination by Remy Singh. Yeah. That's twice he's gone to that low kick, left hook, low kick. It's worked really well both times. That knee hit hard. Remy Singh just hit a hard knee on Rainier. It might have actually hit the face. Singh's got him pushed up into the corner, really starting to put it, push his weight around. Singh leaning heavy on Robert Rainier. I want to apologize for some technical difficulties we've been having with one of our cameras here at ringside on Friday Night Fights as we bring you the latest installment of the longest running Muay Thai series in North America. Watching Remy Singh making his Friday Night Fights return 
And growing stronger and more confident against Robert Rainier here in round three. Yeah, Rainier is an excellent fighter, but he just doesn't seem to have an answer right now for, for Remy Singh. Straight left gets in for Singh. Knee to the body. Rainier. Bulldozes, Strong move from Rainier right there. Bulldozes forward and lands on top of Remy. He actually needs to do more of that. He needs to not play in the clinch. He needs to get a hold of Remy Singh and just bulldog him to the ground. Just muscle it up, make things hard on Remy Singh, and maybe hurt him a little bit. Another strong finish, though, to the round for Singh, Primo. And how much does that stick in judges' minds when you see those last 10 or 15 seconds, even after a negative moment, the aggressor just bounces back and sees his control back? Yeah, the, the judges see that. They recognize what's going on. You know, Remy Singh does a really good job. Right here's the sweep. He typically does it, he steps to his right and sweeps with his left, but he'll do it the other direction as well. But you watch him, you know, they get into a clinch, Remy sidesteps, turns Rainier, and he throws something right off it. If Rainier doesn't go down off that, off that sidestep and sweep, then Singh will throw something and score with it. Set for our fourth round, we're scheduled for five at 160 pounds. Robert Rainier and the white trunks and blue pads, blue elbow pads, against Remy Singh and the red gloves and blue trunks with silver sequin. Now Rainier tries to be the bully in the opening moments of this fourth round. Six and elbow inside. Nice in close couple quarters. of elbows right there. See, Remy does such a good job when he, when he gets into that clinch. He starts mushing Rainier's face with his head. And he'll move to the other side, and then he'll scrape his head back across and move to the other side. But it allows him to control the clinch and make things very uncomfortable. Rainier trying his damnedest to muscle Singh here, but Remy kind of methodically regains control of the clinch. Yeah, Singh has just enough of a height advantage and he, like I said earlier, he does a really good job of that little side step and sweep when he's in the clinch to change the angles. Couple inside elbows though again for Rainier. Starting to pile those up a little bit on Remy Singh's jaw. Little blood near the right eye of Singh. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but there's a little blood. It might have been from that series of left elbows that Rainier hit. Watch as he turns, see that? See that blood on the right eye dripping down on Singh? Headbutt? No, I think it, oh, his I think, elbow. I think his it elbow. actually came from the, that, the, those two left elbows that Rainier had, had sent in when they were in the corner. Let's see if Rainier can capitalize and maybe expose that cut a little bit more. Mouth the mouthpiece out. is out. And Kevin Mohal will Bring a halt to the action for a moment. Omar Estevez rinses it off. And back it goes into the mouth of Singh. Remy using the breather. Now he's got Rainier caught up in the ropes. Dangerous moment here. And Kevin Mohal wisely breaking up the two fighters. But as soon as they come back together, Singh unloads with a combination. And again, Tufts, a tr tremendous finish to the round for Remy Singh Primo and maybe undid, maybe undid some of the work by, by Robert Rainier in yeah. that kind of middle part of round four where he landed those elbows Singh and opened is doing, up a cut. He does a really good job in that last 10 seconds of throwing a lot. And they turn here and I believe this is the spot. I thought we were gonna see where Rainier threw those left elbows. Right There's here. one. I think it was a series of two that caused the cut. Thought it was right here, maybe. Rainier's hanging tough. A guy who has more than three times as many fights as he does. Or I should say nearly three times as many fight, as fights as he does. 38 compared, 37 compared to 13. Yeah, it's still a very competitive fight. Very I, competitive, yes. I think, I think Remy Singh is, is, is winning the fight, but Rainier is still in the fight. He's making it very competitive. Round five in this USMF prestige bout. 
And again, Remy Singh getting those long legs extended. You can see the reddening on the right oblique area of Robert Rainier. Out of double dose Muay Thai, a native of Golden Bar, Diamond Bar, California, excuse me. His gym double dose is in Fontana. And Remy Singh, of course, the fan favorite fighting out of Seton in Queens, New York. Back fist try for Singh, misses, got turned around, landed a body kick, Rainier was able to return fire. Another bulldozer move by Rainier. Getting warned by Kevin Mulhall, an illegal takedown. I'm not sure what the, what the problem there was. You know, you're not allowed to loop your foot behind and trip, but you are allowed like he did there. But you are allowed to loop your leg and trip with your knee. And that's what it that's what it looked like Rainier did to me. Kevin Mohal resets the elbow pads. Precious seconds ticking away as Rainier tries to make a final impact in this fight. Oh boy. Now that is illegal. Remy Singh shoves Rainier down and then throws a knee into his chest with Rainier on his knees. And it's a shame because final 10 seconds, Rainier may not have much of a chance to issue payback. Oh boy, Remy Singh wanted to unload one final blow. They seem pretty angry there at the end. I'm not, I mean, I don't really think he had anything to be angry about other than the fact that he was in a fight, so. So a little bit of aggression. Getting out of control in that fifth round. Remy Singh landing a knee to Rainier's body when he was basically, when Rainier was on a knee already. But thankfully held back as he was about to land the chopping blow on the back of Rainier's head at the very end of the fight. See so Singh checking kicks. Pulling Rainier down with him. That long left hand sticking in for Remy. Just had Rainier and then shoved the forearm into the throat of Rainier and then Rainier also took a knee while on the ground. That was yeah, there, there was plenty of time for uh, Remy Singh to decide not to throw that knee. For the official decision for this US MF, US MF bout, we go up to Connor Hall. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we do have a winner. We're going to go to the court scorecard. All the judges see this fight, 50-45, unanimously in favor of Remy Singh. So a top ranking position with the U.S. Muay Thai Federation and an upper hand in the bid for future selections to U.S. national teams and competitions goes the way of Remy Singh, the Seton Jim product. The Estevez brothers and Aziz Nabi join Remy in the ring after a unanimous decision win against Robert Rainier out of Double Dose Muay Thai in California. And Remy, perhaps the experience factor, perhaps the size, perhaps a little bit of everything mixing into this victory tonight for Remy. Yeah, any, any way you slice it, Ariel, it was a, it was a well-deserved win and a, and a well-deserved uh, ranking up for him. So Singh delights the hometown crowd, the New York favorite, picks up the victory. But a good night so far for the Seton crew. And now we turn our attention to the professionals. A triple header coming your way, both Muay Thai and kickboxing action. Up next, we will see Mike the Lion King out of King's Thai Boxing in New York making his professional Muay Thai debut. And he'll go up against another pro making his debut, Norberto El Dragon Seguino. We last saw Norberto on this promotion 
Back in February of 17, when he lost a very familiar name, Primo Bellarosa, Mike the Machine Chirico, another one of your outstanding students. Yeah, uh, back when when uh, Norberto was was an amateur, uh, he fought my guy Mike Chirico for a title, and uh, Mike stopped him with low kicks in uh, that fight. Uh, Nor Norberto's a he's he's a, he's a, a pretty good boxer. He'll throw some side kicks and stuff, but that his side stance doesn't allow him to check low kicks very well. We'll see if he's made the adjustments since he fought uh, Mike Chirico. Compile the 10 and three amateur mark before turning pro. That's Seggy Note in the ring right now on the left side of your screen. Out of royalty combat in Puerto Rico. Originally from San Sebastian. Cornermen tonight, Julio Rivera and Wilfredo Lopez. Now you hear the cheer from the crowd as Mike the Lion King steps into action in the Muay Thai ring for the first time, Primo. Yeah, you know, fairly fairly extensive uh, MMA record. He was five. He was uh, five and one, or uh, twelve and one as an amateur, and he's five and one as a pro. So he's he's an experienced fighter. But this will be his first time in in full rules Muay Thai. We'll see who has the upper hand as we turn our attention to the pros for our introductions. Let's go to Connor Hall. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for three rounds of action in the 185-pound weight division, full rules Muay Thai. Fighting out of the red corner tonight, he's wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He represents Royalty Combat. From Puerto Rico, Noberto Dragon Seguino. And fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the silver trunks with the black trim. And he represents King's Thai Boxing. From right here in New York, New York, Mike the Lion King. Another caveat to this fight, Primo Bellarosa, Mike King, who salutes the crowd one last time before entering battle against Norberto Seguinote. He's been out of action since June of 2014. So in addition to fighting Muay Thai for the first time in his life, professionally at least, he also is dealing with a close to five year layoff from yeah, the that, squared circle. That's a long layoff. We'll, I mean, you know, Mike King looks like he's in shape. So I, you know, I, don't, I think he's been in the gym, but we'll, We'll, we'll see if the if the layoff hurts him. King opens things up with a low leg kick on Seki. No, they say 185 pound battle. We're set for three three minute rounds in the professional ranks. Mike King, the southpaw right now. He'll try to go to that lead leg. Seki note reaching. Gives up five inches in height to Mike King. Looping right hand. Made some contact, didn't seem to phase King at all. King tries one of his own. And Seguino you know, wearing the white trunks with black trim and red lettering on the front, as well as the red gloves. Making his pro debut. Mike King doing the same in Muay Thai, but he does have an MMA mark of five and one as a pro. Yeah, King's starting to find a home for that lead leg kick low. He's got to cut the ring off. There he goes. He's starting to cut it off now rather than just follow Norberto. King kind of stalking El Dragon right now. Walking him down. Remember, three three-minute rounds at the pro level. And these guys are heavy hitters at 185. Still to come, Brian Camara and Sean the Machete Ellis lock up and a 155 pound kickboxing matchup. And our main event after that, Sammy the Bull Mongonia and Omar punches Ahmed. Both of those kickboxing affairs. 110 left in this first round. Both of these guys trying to shake off ring rust. There Mike it King. is. Nice hook, nice knee from King. He finally found his range on that left kick. Jumping knee, has Sekinote on one knee. 
He does beat the count from Kevin Mohal. And Segido looks a little bit off balance here. Yeah, he, he took some hard shots right before that standing eight count. And he has kind of, his feet seem to get a little bit crossed up at times when he's trying to counter. Yeah, like, like oh, what a right hand from, from Norberto. We're even now at standing eights. Well, just as I say that. That was unexpected. A, a vicious right locks the jaw of my king. That's it. King's that smart. King's got to go back to that low kick, keep his distance, get his head back about him. Final seconds of round one. King trying to score at the end. And there's the bell. Wow. Dead even round. Dead even round. Roberto Seguino gingerly walks back to the corner, but he might have landed the biggest shot of the entire round. Yeah, my King's got to stay on that on those low kicks on the lead leg in Roberto. That's going to pay off if he stays on those. If we see this series, watch. King finally found the distance on his on his mid-level kick with the left. Those both hurt. Then he hit a hard hook and into that jump knee. Norberto made a, a mistake right there. He got hit against the ropes and he tried to duck. It's a boxing mistake that they make. A lot of the Puerto Ricans that come here to fight have done so much boxing that they want to duck under. That that duck under hurt him with that knee. And then moments later. Now here's where Norberto's fading back. And you'll watch him, he'll fade and he hit that chopping overhand right. King came right back up, he wanted to fight, but. King ate it pretty nicely. Yeah, he did, his, glo his gloves hit the ground. He clipped the strings, but King's got a good beard on him. A lot of guys, that gets the light turns out, a shot like that. Yeah. That's it, King has to stay, he has to stay with those kicks for a little while. Nice, nice kick from Norberto. And this Mike King's pro Muay Thai debut, but he has a five and one MMA mark at the pro level. 12 and one as an amateur in MMA. His first Muay Thai fight ever, and his first fight of any kind since June of 2014. King's done an excellent job. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the ring rust has hurt him. And in, in his first Muay Thai fight, he's done a good job of, of keeping his form and not getting wild or out of control, which you sometimes expect from an MMA guy switching over to Muay Thai. King on the attack once again. Yeah, Jumping yeah. knee! And, and knee that. hurt, followed with a punch from King. And that deals a knockdown to Norberto Seguino. Norberto doesn't want to fight, that's over. You know, that's a testament to Mike King. It's also a testament to his gym, King's Muay Thai. Aaron Fisher is an excellent, excellent coach. He taught King to strike well, to keep a good pace, and to finish hard. Well, talking to Mike King before the fight tonight, he didn't seem very nervous. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, that I, knee hit right to the ribs of Norberto. It hurt. You could see immediately. Right under the armpit, and then a straight right to follow that. Yeah, the, the, the punch didn't help that at all, but you could, you could see how much that knee hurt. What's the face of Norberto right here? Oh, what a finish. Here it comes, you'll get to see, watch. Look at the reaction. And then that punch certainly sealed the deal. So Mike King shakes off the ring rust in a big way. A winner in his pro Muay Thai debut in impressive fashion, a knockout victory. Let's go up to Connor Hall. All right. Bring it on in, gentlemen, bring it on in. All right, here we go. One minute and one second into round two, we do have a winner by technical knockout, and that is Mike the Lion King. Well, that makes you forget about a long layoff pretty quick, Primo sure. Bellarosa. That was some kind of knee that Mike King loaded up on to end the night sure for Norberto. Sure does. No rust on that guy, huh? And of course, his coach from King's Thai Boxing, Aaron the Ghost Fisher, enjoying that victory very much. 
one of the strongest camps, camps in the New York City area. Congratulations to Mike King and welcome back to the squared circle. Now it's time, folks, for our two main event fights. A pair of kickboxing matchups, three three-minute rounds scheduled. First between Sean the Machete Ellis and Brima, King Brimezis Camara. And then our main event, our final fight, a few minutes after that, Sammy the Bull Mongonia and Omar punches Ahmed. As we get set for Camara and Ellis, two of our outstanding fighters here on the promotion, let's learn a bit more about our competitors. My name is Brahma Kamara. I'm from Newark, Delaware. My record is three and three. I started with Muay Thai and kickboxing about 10 years ago. I moved down about half a mile from Jack's kickboxing gym, a gym that I actually own and run now. The work ethic, the discipline that it takes to become a champion, to be a fighter, to achieve your goals, to work hard, to push your body, both physically and mentally, to apply that to other facets of my life, such as running a business, being a coach, being a family man, being a member of the community, it really helped me a great amount. Again, about my opponent, I don't know much about him. I don't know who he beat. I don't know who he lost to. But tonight, I just plan on doing what I got to do and bring him the win. My name is Sean Ellis. Um, I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, fighting out of New York City, Anderson's Martial Arts. I don't know much about my opponent. He's just another obstacle like everybody else. You know, you just go in there, have fun, do the work. I've been, tra I've been training nonstop. There was never no fight camp, we always had a fight camp. There was no training special for no special fighter. Uh, tonight, fans are gonna expect energy, constant pace, nothing but fun. It's, it's gonna be high, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be hard. Well, there you have it, Sean the Machete Ellis and Brian Camara set to do battle. And one of the most flamboyant characters we have here on Friday Night Fights, entering the ring right now. Actually, two of them in Brima Camara, a.k.a. King Brimezis, out of Jack's Gym in Newark, Delaware, dancing around the ring. And his opponent, Sean Ellis, equally as confident and self-assured. Brima Camara, originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, now the owner-operator of Jack's Gym in Newark, Delaware. And here's the man draped in the green, gold, and black of the Jamaican flag, Kingston's own Sean Ellis, representing Anderson's Martial Arts Academy in New York City. This fight will be at 155 pounds. Again, kickboxing rules in effect for the official introductions to our co-main event. Here's Connor Hall. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for three rounds of Glory Rules kickboxing in the 155 pound weight division. Fighting out of the red corner tonight, he's wearing the white and gold trunks and weighing in at 155 pounds. He represents Jack's gym with a record of three and five, two by way of knockout from Newark, Delaware, King Brian Mises Kamara. And fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the green trunks and weighing in at 154. He trains with Anderson's martial arts with a record of one and one. From New York by way of Kingston, Jamaica, Sean the Machete Ellis. Well, Primo, last time we saw Brian McCamara in action here on Friday Night Fights, it was back in February, and he locked up with Jeffrey then in a bloody three-round fight, and he lost a very, very tough unanimous decision to then, even though he opened up a cut, a pretty nasty cut over the eye of Jeffrey then, and Kamara looking for some revenge as he takes on Sean Ellis tonight. Yeah, Kamara's record is uh, three and five with two KOs. I actually think that Brima is a much better fighter than what his record suggests. He's, uh, he's beat some studs and he's lost to some studs. His pro record is basically just full of studs that he's fought. There's been no easy fights in his pro career. Three and five with two KOs to Kamara's credit. 
He's wearing the right, the white trunks with gold trim. Sean Ellis decked out in green tonight. He's one and one as a pro, but this is his first kickboxing match. Sean Ellis had a, had a pretty extensive amateur career at 15 and one. That's, you know, that's some solid work as an amateur. He's also got Brett Havlicek in his corner, who's a fantastic coach. I'm sure he's completely prepared for the pro ranks. Machete picked up his first pro win on the very same card. We last saw Camara February the 1st. He beat Lucas Alexander by unanimous decision. Nice one-two combo from Ellis there. Just a lot of swagger oozing off these two fighters at 155. Right there. Ellis has really good head movement, but what he ends up doing when he when he's moving his head, he drops his left hand and he turns hard hard to his right side. Nice sweep there from Ellis. But what I was saying was he drops his lead hand and he turns hard to his right side. What uh, Brahma has to do when Ellis does that is fin finish with a right kick, kick the arm, kick the elbow, kick the kick the leg of Ellis. Ellis loading up on an overhand right there, came up empty. Hey, you see how he drops that left arm in his defensive move? Once that happens, I would tell my guys, it's a, it's a free shot to, for, to kick to the body or kick to the leg. Oh, a spinning that back kick. That landed hard. That landed hard to the midsection of Brima. And That's gonna be the end of this fight. That's gonna be the end of this fight, Ariel. There is. Virtually no way that Brian Camara makes this count. That's it. A first round knockout for Sean the Machete Ellis. A vicious spinning back kick right to the midsection of Brian Camara, and he was down for the count. Just as we were warming up here. Wow, I'd like to see the replay on that. I'm not sure if that landed to the liver of Brian Camara, or if it came in up under the floating rib. Either way, it was it was the death shot. And the quickness with which he executed that move was just outstanding. Oh yeah. Up into the rib is where it landed. Wow. And Brian Camara is a tough guy. Oh, he really to is. To put him down like that. Yeah, Brian is no punk. He's, uh, he's not staying down for no reason. Right in the solar plexus, Primo. Yeah, that right, might have right, right in the middle. Right, right in the middle. Yep, with the heel. Sucked all the air out of him. Kamara had no chance to get up. Oh, right between the pecs, right? The heel, yeah. right between the pecs. My goodness. Oh, boy. Wow. Vicious back heel kick. Woo. Well, Ellis makes short work of King Brian Mises for the official announcement. What a pro debut. Well, Ellis now has back-to-back -back victories on Friday Night Fights. Runs his record up to two and one. Camara falls to three and six for the official announcement of an outstanding finish for Sean Ellis. Let's go to Connor Hall. Ladies and gentlemen. Two minutes and 32 seconds into the first round, we have a winner by way of knockout, Sean the Machete Ellis. Well, not much drama there. And <laughs> not much left up to, uh, nothing had to be left up to the judges that time, Primo, because Sean Ellis sized up Ryan Camara and landed just a picture perfect spinning back kick right to the solar plexus and scored his first professional knockout. Really a marvelous performance. And Sean Ellis rightfully celebrating with the crowd cheering him on. The product of Anderson's martial arts in Lower Manhattan picks up the victory. Now two and one and solar, excuse me, now two and one and King Brimesis. Brian McCamara now back to work as he plans out his next appearance. Yeah, excellent, excellent debut for Ellis. So Sean Ellis picks up the win and that leaves us with just one fight remaining. It'll be our main event of the evening. Sammy the Bull Mongonia 
We saw him just over a month ago in this very ring on Friday Night Fights. Make short work of Tehran. The Tornado has sawed off a third round KO. And tonight, Mongonia gets to go up against another hometown favorite. And Omar punches Ahmed out of the seat, Tan Jim. To learn a little bit more about our, let's learn a little bit more about our main event competitors on Friday Night Fights right now. My name is Omar Ahmed, born and raised in Queens, New York. My record is 10 and four. I've been doing Muay Thai now for 16 years. I started at the age of 13. Before that, I was an active basketball player and just playing a lot of different sports. And my style is aggressive and technical, pretty unpredictable. I just adapt to whoever I'm fighting pretty much. And based off of my opponents is how I fight. Every time I fight, you could expect something different. Tonight, you expect uh, a great performance from me. I usually come out and put on a great show, all my fights. I never disappoint the crowd and I'm going for the win, as always. That's what matters to me most is winning. I'm Samuel Mongonia. I fight out of Houston, Texas in Revolution and Hyena Muay Thai. I don't feel like I'm tougher than most people, but I can be tougher than most people. In the sport we play, there's a lot uh, to the game, and, and me personally improving uh, is always just a little something, moving here, dropping your weight here. Um, I'm always learning. I've been doing the sport for a long time. Well, tonight, you definitely gonna be able to expect a good show. Uh, I respect Teron, he's an awesome fighter. He's, he's got a lot of power, uh, but also so do I. Whether you're watching it live or you're in the arena, we're gonna have a good time and it's going down tonight. So there you have it. It'll be Omar punches Ahmed who enters the arena right now. Flanked by Rami Ibrahim, part of the Seton family of course and Aziz Nabi, and also Omar's brother Mohammed, part of the corner team for punches tonight. Omar returned to action on Friday Night Fights in November, picked up a unanimous decision win against Brahma Kamara. Has a 10 and three record in professional Muay Thai and kickboxing, 18 and one as an amateur. And Omar puts his kickboxing skills back on display tonight against the man entering the ring right now, Sammy the Bull Mongonia. And a familiar face on Mongonia's left, Mark the Hyena Beecher, man you know very well, Primo. Yeah, that's, that's my brother. Love the guy to death. I love Sammy Mongonia. He's a phenomenal fighter with a phenomenal mustache. And uh, I'm really excited to see this. I, I've known Omar since he was really young. He's 30 years old now. He's been fighting since he was a kid, since he was you know, 14, 15 years old. I can remember back on cards uh, where you know Omar was, was 16, he was fighting grown men. Took a little bit of a layoff and uh, has since come back in the last couple of years and he, you know, he's done really well. Mostly fought, fighting under kickboxing rules rather than Muay Thai rules. So we're, we're gonna see if that's a factor tonight against Sammy Mongonia. For the official introductions to our main event of the evening, Mongonia and Ahmed, we send it up one more time to our ring announcer, Connor Hall. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event. Three rounds of action, glory rules kickboxing in the 147 pound weight division. Fighting out of the red corner, he's got the white trunks on with the black trim and weighing in at 145. He represents Seton Muay Thai with a record of 10 and three. From Queens, New York, Omar punches a man. And fighting out of the blue corner tonight, he's wearing the black trunks with the orange trim and weighing in at 146. He represents Hyena Muay Thai with a record of 6-1-1. One, and one. Two of those wins by way of knockout. From Houston, Texas, Sammy the Bull Mongonia. Well, Sammy Mongonia making a name for himself on Friday Night Fights, Primo Bellarosa. We saw him eke out a majority draw with Eddie Martinez back in December, a fight he easily could have won had he not uh, got knocked down in the fourth round. The fight would have gone his way on the scorecards. Yeah, that standing eight count was the deciding factor for a draw in that fight. He really matched Eddie Martinez uh, blow for blow in that fight. And then an outstanding performance against Tehran Hassanoff back in March. 
to begin his Friday Night Fights career, and now he's up against another hometown guy, and Omar punches Ahmed. Yeah, the, Mar the Martinez fight was a was a real coming out party for Samuel Mangonia. Martinez was was an established pro, and Mangonia came out and showed not only that he could compete with guys that had been around his pros, but he but he could beat them. The Hazanov fight, uh, Mangonia really had a fire under his ass in that fight. He came out like a devil and re and really took it to the tornado. And now here he is fighting fighting Omar Ahmed, another experienced guy at ten and three as a pro, a little bit more pro experience where Mangonia has a little bit more amateur experience. So. He seems to come to town, fight the hometown guy, hopefully go home with a win, I guess. Extensive instructions from Kevin Mulhall. Remember, we are fighting under kickboxing rules here at 147 pounds. No elbows in play tonight. Between Mongonia and Ahmed, our main event on Friday Night Fights is underway. Mongonia and Ahmed in the center of the ring. Ahmed's a little bit taller. Mongonia's a little bit thicker. That head kick narrowly missed that Ahmed threw to start. Spinning back kick right there. Which we saw end our last fight just moments ago. Sean Ellis landing one beautifully on Brian McCamara. Yeah, that was amazing. For a first round KO. Another head kick from Omar Ahmed. He's got some flashy kicks. Outside leg kick for Omar. A couple of nice shots for him early in this first round. Nice little overhand right. There's that overhand right again for Mongonia. He's got to be aggressive in this fight because Omar Med will he'll dance and he'll hit you and he'll dance and he'll kick you and, and he can keep that going for three rounds, no problem. Nice counter punch for Mongonia. Mongonia hair off balance there, trying to go up high on Omar Ahmed. Spinning back kick, try again by punches. Maybe known as punches, but he can use the feet just as well, and the knees. Oh, stiff push kick by Omar Ahmed. Yeah, he's known as Omar punches. I, I actually think that, he's, that he's, low, he's better with his kicks, but he does hit hard. Inside leg kick, he's showing the versatility right now in this first round as Ahmed. Mongonia and Ahmed trading kicks here. Remember, professional kickboxing rules in effect here as Mongonia walks Ahmed into the corner. Nice body work from Mongonia. He threw a nice right hand to the body, then came up top. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds at 147. Oh, thudding left hook to the body for Mongonia. Uh, Omar, Omar's got super hard straight kicks. You can see whenever he throws a straight kick, it, it moves somebody. Nice uppercut from Mongonia, though. Tries to load up on one again. That caught Punch's attention. See, I notice that uh, Omar, Omar will move, move, strike, move, move, strike. When he gets cornered up, you know, he's, he's like a cornered cat. He'll, he'll, he'll duck his head, and he'll just start ripping punches. Mongonia walking down Ahmed towards the ropes again. Mongonia wearing the black trunks. Ahmed in the white with black trim. Yeah, that uppercut from Mongonia, that right uppercut is starting to find a home. I think he's figuring out that when uh, Omar gets cornered and he covers up, he covers his head, but there's a gap right there. Another straight kick from Omar Ahmed. Boy, he puts it out there nicely. Solid first round. We yeah. saw that one go back and forth between Omar Ahmed and Sammy Mangonia. Very, very close round. You know, I, I think, unfortunately, this is only a three-round fight. I'd really like to see this fight over five. I think the three rounds uh, favors Omar Ahmed rather than Sammy Mangonia. He's Mangonia's been used to five rounds in a tie fight where you kind of warm up. I would really like to see this over five, not because I want to see Mangonia have an advantage, but because, I, man, two great fighters. I just want to see more rounds. Agreed. This is our main event on Friday Night Fights. We come to you live from New York City's Broad Street Ballroom, everybody. Aria Lagami with Primo Bellarosa for an outstanding main event, pitting Sammy Mongonia out of Hyena. There's that uppercut that Mongonia's been throwing once he gets into that, into that firestorm right there. Mongonia out of Hyena Muay Thai in Texas against Seton Zone Omar Ahmed. 
known as punches. Who's putting those feet to good use in round one. The two fighters trade kicks to start round two. I think the, the deciding factor here is going to be Mongolia's inside punch work. Nice back kick by Omar there. Yeah. Yeah, that stopped Mongolia from following up off the missed round kick. Sammy's trying to go up high on Omar. Nice punch combination from Omar right there to get out of the corner. Yeah, works his way out of trouble. Yeah. Good footwork. You know, Mongonia seems to be trying to be sneaky. A nice straight right hand from Mongonia. Good follow up with the kick. A vicious knee try from Sammy there, yeah. leaning on Omar. Nice, stuff, stiff jab. That's what he needs. And stifle the back fist try from Omar Ahmed as well, did Mongonia. Kept the defense up after flashing the offense. Mongonia trying to go behind the guard of Ahmed with the right hand. Yeah, Ahmed has a very high guard with his hands when you punch him. I'd like to see Mongonia throw like, a, like an overhand right and follow it with a left uppercut, and I think it would hit. Nice jabs from, from Omar Ahmed as he moves out. Mongonia the one coming forward though for much of the second round. About two thirds of the way through. Body Good punch. body work, you can hear that thud man. Playing keep away from Mongonia a little bit here. That right hand from Mongonia just came right down the center. You can see it go right down Ahmed's nose. And I wonder if that body punch that hooked to the body a few moments ago kind of took the wind out of Omar's sails a bit. It adds up after a while. We'll see. A little cut looks like developing under Sammy's right eye. A little bruising, perhaps. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of bruising. I noticed a little cut above. Sammy's eyebrow earlier. I, I was concerned he got into a fight between yesterday's weigh-in and tonight. As he has an exchange with Ahmed on the break. That's round two in the books. Good uh, action here. Another close, close round. Very tough to score. Very and tough to score. For, for the second time tonight, I'll say I am glad I'm not a judge on this. Both fighters have had some really strong moments here. Looked like Mongonia was kind of in control for much of that second round. Nice left kick under the armpit there of Ahmed, but Omar ate it right up and countered. The only thing I saw decisively in that round, Primo, was just, was just Sammy coming forward for a lot of it. Yeah, you know, uh, Omar does a really good job. Like I said, he'll move, he'll strike, he'll move, he'll strike. And all his strikes are hard when they hit, you know? But Sammy Mongonia is the forward fighter and often the forward fighter, as long as they're not just taking a beating. But if they're moving forward and they're striking, that's what the judges are gonna see. Our final round of action set to commence on the latest installment of Friday Night Fights, Mongonia and Amen. Back at it for the third of three. That's Mongonia plowing forward here. Sammy looking for another victory on Friday Night Fights. Both these men, in fact, looking for a second straight win on this promotion. Omar with a record of 10 and three coming in as a pro in both Muay Thai and kickboxing. Sammy at six, one and one. Nice body kick from Mongolia right there. Omar moves well though. You see, he'll move till he's on a rope, then he'll move again till he's on a rope. Oh, doubling up with the kicks. Flashy kick, gets oozed from the crowd, but it didn't make contact. 
Omar tries the leaping front kick as well. As he, he's, he's always dangerous. That's the thing. Like, you know, often there's a lot of guys that'll try flashy stuff like that. And it, it's sound and fury signifying nothing. When Omar does stuff like that, he's always dangerous. Omar trying to fight, fend off the oncoming Mongonia with the sidekick, but it's Sammy coming in, switching up on the knees. Punch is trying to do the same. Mongonia in the black trunks, Ahmed in the white. Ahmed comes up empty on the spinning back kick try. Halfway through round three, our final round of the night on Friday Night Fights. You know, Mongonia keeps trying to be sneaky with those head kicks. I, he kicks hard. I'd like to see him just freaking power through with it. Minute to go. We got to see these guys turn it up a little bit here. One minute left in our main event. Mongonia and Ahmed struggling for an edge. There's two equally matched opponents here, Primo. Yeah, very equally matched so far. Mongonia putting all his weight on Ahmed up against the ropes. Really pushed him out of the ring. Final 30 seconds here. Can one of these fighters make a stand and steal the show? Maybe steal the hearts of the judges as well, if necessary. Short clock, only 10 seconds to go. Low leg kick for Mongonia. And there is the bell. See, like, neither guy could really get opened up in that third round. It was a very, very evenly matched fight. Both guys could easily come out on top on the scorecards. We're going to have to see. Yeah, super, super close fight. You know, excellent form technique from both guys. Like I said, I would have liked to have seen it go five. I would have liked to have seen it develop a little bit more. Well, hopefully we'll see these two meet again. That was a really technically sound matchup. Two experienced combatants going at it in our Friday Night Fights main event. And now it's up to the judges to decide our victor. the decision while we have a moment I want to say thank you to our tremendous production crew our Friday Night Fights team Freddy Soberanis Javier Soberanis Eddie Soberanis the Soberanis family making it sing tonight our camera operators Lee Hosang Kevin Talbot and Victoria Harrington and our tremendous replay crew as well Dexter David and Eldon Phillips we have the judges' scorecards in hand. Let's go to Connor Hall for the decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge A sees this 29-28 in favor of the red corner. Judge B, 30-27 in favor of the red corner. Judge C, 30-27 for a unanimous decision in favor of Omar Amin. So the hometown fighter gets the decision tonight. It's Omar punches Ahmed, edging Sammy the Bull Mongonia in a very, very close fight, Primo. I'm kind of surprised it was as uh, one-sided on a couple of the scorecards as it was, but I really thought both fighters was about an even a fight as you can see. Yeah, very close fight. Could have gone either way. I, I, I agree with you. I think that may, maybe unanimous 30-27 on all three judges. Might, might be a stretch, but uh, all in all, very good fight by both fighters. Well, hopefully we will see Omar Ahmed back in the ring very soon, as well as Sammy the Bull Mongonia. We wish him 
very well, as well as his family, his girlfriend Janet, his daughter Sidley, and his son Malachi. We say send our best to the entire team from Hyena Muay Thai, and of course a big night for the team from Seton Gym in Queens, New York. So for the Friday Night Production, Friday Night Fights Production team, our president Justin Blair. Our head of operations, Eddie Marini, and our director of events, Lauren Gilbert. My broadcast partners, Primo Bellarosa for the main card, and James Guccione a little bit earlier in the night for the undercard portion of our show. My name's Ari Oligami. Thank you so much for joining us live from New York City. We'll see you next time on Friday Night Fights.